hello, hello, and welcome back. Bringing you the next installment of Spec Overview. It is going to be Fury Warrior. Uh, just to follow arms, it's going to be nice. Um, fairly easy one because a lot of the pull downs overlap. So uh, it's generally just like a kind of okay, this is just a slightly different version of Warrior. I mean, the playstyles are quite different and the comps are quite different, but it's uh, generally very similar. Um, in the background we've got some twos, and again, like I apologize if there's any like FPS issues, it was it comes from the same stream as before, but um, hopefully it doesn't bother you that much. It is the overview that we're here for after all. Um, yeah, I'm aware that my tracksuit is amazing, it's uh, my Malaysia one. Come watch the stream if you want to know more about it, but uh, let's get into this. So. When we're looking at a Fury Warrior, we're looking at another Warrior, so um, a lot of the cooldowns are similar, but the playstyles are actually quite different. Um, Fury Warrior is a more defensively uh, poorer, they're poorer defensively than an Arms Warrior, um, but their burst and their mobility is, is significantly better. Um, this is due to... Um, just a higher amount of burst damage through rampage, and also a uh, and the ability to spec into double leap. So that gives them two leaps, and they can also go into two charges as well. And the that extra leap at a lower cooldown additionally gives them the added uh, defensive benefits that you get from that you get from leap on top of it. They're um, Major offensive cooldowns are the same. Battlecry Avatar, they are mu they need to be taken in much more care than against an Arms Warrior. This is due to the the damage that can come from a Fury Warrior can come very very quickly. We're talking two or three seconds. This is why when you're playing against a Fury Warrior, it's important to kite those um, um, offensive cooldowns because then after that you don't actually need to worry for a, a bit of time until the next one comes up because that's when it gets scary again. The other offensive cooldowns include um, Dragon Roar and Bladestorm. Bladestorm is the same utility-based AoE um, CC immunity altogether as we have from Arms, but it does a bit more damage because you have two weapons obviously spinning around, so it does a bit more. Uh, Dragon Roar is an AoE like uh, damaging ability, but the main thing behind it is it increases the damage done. Um, Afterwards, I think they, it used to be 20%, but I think it's down to like 17 or 13. Um, so if they're running Dragon Roar, you'll see it's a big AoE circle that comes out. It's very similar to what the Warbreaker is, but it's not purple, it's brown. So if you see them pop Dragon Roar and their um, Avatar and Battlecry expect to take some really heavy damage, it might be worth popping a healing cooldown or a defensive cooldown or like disarming them or something like that. But see, because it's such a low window, small window, and really, really heavy, they are seriously um, like uh, like put up against CC. If you stun them during their, their their burst, or you CC them if they don't have a trinket or disarm them or something like this, they're gonna seriously feel that pain. Um, their defensive cooldowns, as we said, we have, they have leaps, they have the, the enraged regeneration, which is essentially they die by the sword, but they don't get parry from it. It gives that that thirty percent. Uh, reduction in damage and all of their um, blood thirsts in that um, period of time of eight seconds heals for 20% of their health. So this is a, they're mainly based around regening health as they deal damage and take a lot of damage because when they're berserked they deal more damage but also take a large amount of damage. This is why Arms Warrior is a direct counter to Fury Warrior because with a lot of the Mortal Strike effects it reduces the um, the healing that a Fury Warrior gets from their own personal healing and causes issues there but uh an arms warrior doesn't exactly have that much healing so if it's like a one-on-one -on -one battle it'll be fairly even but um an arms warrior is likely to if they play it correctly nullify a significant amount of the fury warriors burst through parrying parrying their entire burst and then diver sword whatever but that's irrelevant the utility comes in the form of uh disarm and their stuns they don't they, they don't have as much utility in terms of like jewel and stuff like that that uh, an arms warrior has but with the nerfs on jewel it's not actually that amazing um and for cc they additionally have fear which is baseline for warriors um 
on the DPS spectrum. Now that we're looking at that, let's look at how Fury Warriors are generally supposed to be played. They're supposed to be played based around CC into burst, so comps like KFC and um, and like Arcane Mage, Arcane Mage Fury, things like this are actually really really strong because you get a CC chain into this burst that comes out in a matter of seconds, can blow up people. It's one of those few comps, one of those classes that actually has this huge amount of burst that you don't really see that much anymore. Um, uh, other comps, so you have the various warrior warrior mages, you can do it with frost, you can do it with arcanes, really strong, you can do it with KFC, like Marksman Hunter. Fury Warriors is a strong comp. Um, Fury Warriors, you don't see them as much, but anything that is very bursty, or it like rotates itself around burst cooldowns, you could you could run it. You could potentially run it like Fury Warrior Turbo, but I don't think it's gonna be as strong as Arms Warriors Turbo. Um you could do it with like a, uh, I suppose you could do it with like a, um, a destruction warlock if you're trying to get out chaos bolts while bursting, but then you have fear DRs and things like that. So you don't see it played that often, but it is still um, a viable spec. It's by no means never played. It's still very good. I think one of the best ones is you have the, the mage warrior uh, comp and also KFC, they're really, really strong in. Um, so you're basically using your CC, as we always say with Warriors, to try to either start or finish CC chain so that their uptime during the CC chain is heavy, um, using their, their CC well. And uh, to, to counter uh, Fury Warrior, essentially, as we said before, that we're going to be... Um, we're going to be kiting... Defense, uh, cutting offensive cooldowns, trying to disarm, reduce it because that short window of a battle cry and avatar. Once that's kited or CC'd, they're going to be hitting like a bit of a wet noodle for a bit. Um, what it's what what we need to bear in mind when we're trying to do that is Fury Warriors have much more mobility and can get after you much faster than an Arms Warrior can because if they're running the the double the double leaps, they're going to get at you. If they're running um, charges, they can get at you, so they can actually just get through a lot faster. Although they do take a lot more damage, so as we said in Arms Warrior, you shouldn't necessarily be attacking a, a significant amount of the time. A Fury Warrior, you can target and is a very good target, especially when the healer can't get to them or they don't have defensive cooldowns left. Um, because they don't have defensive, they don't have defense. They can't spec into defensive stance, which is a reduction in damage, which is just passive essentially when you're when you're sitting there, and uh, they can't get their hundred percent parry. But they do still have spell reflex, so you need to bear that in mind. So I hope this was helpful. It's it's a it's a lot shorter than my arms one because a lot of the stuff, basic arms stuff is ca is covered in that. And I suppose I play arms a lot, so I have a lot more to talk about than that. Um, I hope this was helpful. Make sure to let me know um, if you think there's anything that I missed or anything that you think you want to be included, like um, a more in-depth talking about how to counter or more in-depth look into comps and stuff like that. Because I can do that. Still trying to figure out the format and any uh, input is greatly um greatly needed really and and appreciated also let me know what classes you want me to do soon because people ask me they get they get done a lot faster we i think i'm going to get onto dk next because i know there's some people that want me to do that and i might be getting onto shadow priest because i know there's some people that want me to do that so uh i hope uh this was helpful and uh i'll see you next time peace Hello there and thanks for watching my video. Make sure to subscribe if you like what you see and like if you liked it, dislike if you don't. Please comment to uh, let me know what you want to see in the future and uh, make sure to uh, come tune in and watch me on Twitch. I'm live from 12 a.m. or 12 midnight uh, GMT for normally about six hours playing a whole bunch of games. Hopefully I'll see you there.